In today's video, I'm going to give you guys the behind the scenes perspective of how I photograph an indoor wedding reception from start to finish. So my main goal for documenting wedding receptions is to capture the mood and the ambiance lighting of the reception venue, but at the same time using my own lights, light up the subject in a way that's flattering and also helping them stand out a little bit from the backgrounds. So I shoot with two Fujifilm X-T3s as my camera bodies, and I have a Godox V1 on top of each camera. And the V1 serves as my main on-camera bounce flash, also serves as the master to trigger my off-camera flash adjust the power of them, turn channels on and off, etc. And my off-camera flashes are two Godox AD200s as my two main lights in the reception space. And I also have one additional Godox AD200 Pro as my third auxiliary light that I use for detail shots and I also use it for portraits. So as far as flash modifiers go, each flash that I use both on camera and off has a half CTO gel on it there to serve to get the flash color temperature closer to the tungsten color temperature of the reception room lighting. And on the two 8200s, I do have a quarter inch grid spot, and that is basically to kind of tighten and narrow the flash beam so that I can control exactly what it's pointing at. And for the AD200 Pro, I do change the flash modifier depending on what I'm doing um, during the wedding reception. And as far as light stands go, I use two Manfrotto 12 foot stands as my main stands for the AD200s, and then I also use one Manfrotto Nano stand. I'm going to use this as my auxiliary light stand which is shorter and lighter but it's easier to move around quickly so before I start taking out the flashes and lighting anything my first goal is to kind of analyze the room for this reception room in particular we have an entrance door at the front with the main dance floor in the middle and then the sweetheart table at the opposite side of the room and the guest tables are only to the left and to the right and then based on the timeline I can figure out what activities are going to be happening also figure out where they're going to be happening the grand entrance the couple's going to come from this front door and they're going to go through the main dance floor and then the speeches are going to have the speakers stand by to the sweetheart table and then the first dances and any, any type of parent dances are going to be happening obviously on the dance floor with the cake cutting happening off to the side here which i'm probably not going to use any off-camera lighting just going to be too difficult to move a light quickly there so now it's time to strategically set up my flashes and for this wedding i'm going to be shooting with two flashes off camera I'm going to use my on-camera flash to bounce off the ceiling or nearby wall as a third available light source. As far as placement goes, I place the flashes on opposite sides of the room and diagonal to each other. So that's to cover as many activities as possible and allow me to shoot from different places in the dance floor or in the venue. As far as the height goes, it's, it's kind of me eyeballing it, but you want it sufficiently high enough so that if people walk through your shot, they won't somehow block the beam of light and cast a shadow on your subject. And then as far as the tilt angle of the light, you want it pointed slightly down so that once you raise it up it is still pointing toward the dance floor and as far as the actual direction I'm going to be pointing these two flashes toward the center of the dance floor and then here I'm basically checking the position the angle and the direction by standing at the center of the dance floor and kind of like with line of sight looking at the flash head and making sure that it is in line with a potential subject that it's the center of the dance floor then I just adjust it as I see fit so now it's time to start dialing in the exposure and the flash power and I am shooting in manual exposure only, so I'm adjusting all the shutter speed, aperture, and ISO manually. And the first things first is with the flashes off, I expose for the room. So my main goal here is to dial in the exposure settings, which expose for the highlights or the mood lighting of the room, but overall it keeps the room darker. That way I don't have to set my flashes at super high powers in order to light the subject. And I generally achieve this by keeping the shutter speed as close to the max sync speed as possible, which is typically at 1 250th of a second. So Sometimes I do drop it down to 1 over 1 60th of a second if I need to. And that's basically for the ambient lighting of the venue. And then aperture is really to preference. I like shallow depth of field, so I usually shoot wide open. But shooting at larger apertures also gives you the side benefit of keeping your flash powers lower, which allows you to shoot more shots and shoot faster without really taxing the flashes too much. And as far as ISO goes, I try to keep this as low as possible. But if the flash power starts trending very high, 
high like to one half or you know full power that prevents you from getting too many shots in succession so if that happens i do raise the iso so that i can lower my flash power kind of to a more desirable level which at this point i'm going to turn on the flashes and really adjust the power until i get a good exposure on the subject that's also balanced with the mood lighting and here i'm going to take a test shot of my assistant ricky who's helping me film the behind the scenes of this video So as flash power settings go, a lot of people ask about do I use TTL or manual. So while most people think that TTL is more advantageous to getting the shot and manual flash is you know, slower for more artistic control, I actually use manual flash for all the flashes that I use, uh, mainly because this gives me consistency in post-processing and it also provides me a systematic way for troubleshooting because if you leave it in TTL, the camera is going to make new decisions every single time. Whereas if you leave it in manual, if something is wrong, you can kind of like fix one variable at a time. And I think most importantly, manual flash also allows me to regulate the flash power. So with TTL, you can't stop the flash from using full power burst or anything like that, which at that point, if it does a full power burst, it's going to take, you know, 1.5 to 2 seconds to fully recycle. And I personally try to avoid anything higher than 1 fourth or 1 eighth power on the wedding reception so that I can, you know, keep shooting moments as they happen. As far as flash power recommendations go, generally my off-camera flashes are set to 1 16th or 1 32nd power, and I'll just those as I see fit and my on-camera bounce flash is usually at one quarter to one eighth power depending on how far the subject is and my distance from the wall or the ceiling and just a warning as far as the behind the scenes go I won't be able to tell you the exact powers that I'm using just because it doesn't document it into the EXIF data of the photos so here I'm using the AD200 Pro for the detail shots because I can really have fine control over the flash power and I'm shooting it through a shoot through umbrella in order to diffuse the light and also have a larger light source and I position the umbrella 45 degrees to where I'm shooting and this is going to give some nice you know directional but also very soft lighting for the centerpiece. For this shot I'm using the 56mm 1.2 to get some nice bokeh in the background and also to kind of blur out all the crowd that's behind just because I didn't have any opportunity to shoot the reception venue without any guests in there. And now moving on to taking some detailed shots of the dessert table. I'm Again I'm going to have the 8200 Pro off 45 degrees to the table. And you'll see that the umbrella is giving a really nice even lighting to the dessert table but it's also still giving some direction to it as you'll notice in the shadows. I'm using the wider 23mm 1.4 to get a shot of the whole table here and here I'm shooting like 90 degrees perpendicular to the light source which is going to give a little bit more dramatic shadows but again it's still an umbrella so the shadows are going to have a softer roll off so now it's game time for the grand entrance of the couple and basically all that preparation that we did to take a lot of test shots this where it really pays off and where you can just make minor adjustments as you're shooting but everything should be pretty much dialed in here you can see that the AD200 to the right is giving some nice dimension and rim light to the bride and then the 8200 to the left is giving a um, nice even kind of like key light to both the groom and the bride right here so now moving on to the best man speech here you'll see that I adjust the flash head to point to the right side pointed up and pointed slightly back and this is because I want to make sure that the bounce flash is pointing into the direction that the groom's face is pointing at that way gives some direction and lighting to the front of his face for this shot I'm shooting straight into the 8200 in the back which gives you that nice kind of flared out um, hazy look pretty stylized and you also notice that that light is also sculpting a nice kind of line and shape for the groom's face right there in the out of focus area and then moving for another angle right here I'm going to be shooting from the front with the 23 millimeter 1.4 to kind of get a more wider shot again you can see the rim light coming from the right and then I have the rest of the lighting being filled with the on-camera flash which is pointing up and to the left. Now we're moving on to the speech for the maid of honor and this is pretty much the same lighting situation where you have the rim light to the right and the bounce flash which is lighting to the left. And then changing positions here I'm going to move the flash head to the other side again. That way I'll have the light landing on the front of the bridesmaid's face and I'm constantly taking shots that way I can really nail that like kind of peak moment. As far as the composition goes for this one it is intentional that I do have the couple kind of in the frame to the left and I try to balance 
balance the couple out on the left third and I have the bridesmaids on the other side of the right third that way you can have more context about who the maid of honor is talking to in this case um, the father of bride actually went on the side that I wasn't expecting at this point you just kind of have to like roll with the punches in here I believe I just used the main on-camera flash to bounce as the main light for the entire exposure and here you can see that there is no kind of rim light giving him separation from the background only one of the four speakers went on that side so I ended up getting the strategic placement of the flashes pretty good and here just another shot again of the speaker kind of in the same lighting situation as all the other one but here I'm standing a little bit further back at a distance um, that way I can get a little bit more context so now moving on to first dancing the first thing I'm doing here is adjusting to turn off the light coming from the actual main on-camera flash to stick to just the off-camera flashes as the one doing the exposing of the image so in here all the elements pretty much come together where the rim light is coming from the back left and the key light is coming from kind of behind me to the right at the same time the exposure of the venue is dark enough to kind of accentuate these cool looking lights at the top as well as the blue kind of like accent lighting on the ceiling there and then of course you can see all the onlookers as they're smiling as the couple is dancing and I'm always just kind of varying my angles and positions very slightly as I am a prime shooter so I zoom with my feet and move around with my feet a lot change kind of like the perspective if I'm eye level or lower level and here you can see that the lighting is very versatile in the sense that I can move to another position of the room still get a very nice exposure where in this case the rim light is coming more from the right hand side of the groom and the key light is the left hand side 8200 so the diagonal positioning of the lighting allows me to move around with the fluid scene and still adjust on the fly and get shots that I want and here I'm switching over to a tighter focal length with the 56 but at the same time the lighting is still pretty much the same as the previous shot And then for this wedding, they did have an anniversary dance to find out who was married the longest. And here you'll notice that I had to raise the ISO up to 640 because I'm using the bounce flash of the V1 as the key exposure now. And then I still have, again, the rim light coming from the back right. And then as you switch cameras again, you will have to adjust the flash power to match the other camera that we're using. And for this shot, because the flash head is included in the frame, there is a nice flare at the bottom, but with the flash right behind the couple right here it gives a nice kind of like halo-y rim light behind them as things are progressing i do notice that there's this little girl over here taking photos of all the dancing with a cell phone so i snapped that shot here the girl is lit with the bounce flash coming to the left but here you can see also that the 8200 to the right is still uh, giving some shape to the couple that's dancing in the foreground here to the right if that wasn't there then they would just be kind of just like black shadowy and not really any shape to them and here we have the longest married couple may just snap a shot right here whenever i'm at this position of the reception room it's gonna be generally the same lighting settings so now that we're doing the cake shot basically you're just gonna run with just the bounce flash pointing straight into the wall to the left right there and pointing slightly upwards so that way i can give a nice kind of like 45 degree to the left and then also 45 degree coming from the top on the couple the lighting ends up being very nice and even um, and still slightly directional so for the father daughter dance instead of going with the two 8200s coming from the left and the right i change things up and only use the 8200 coming from the left as the rim and then I'm using the Godox V1 coming from the right hand side and always remember to get a tight shot a wide shot a low shot eye level shot even kind of high up shots if you can get it and I'm gonna adjust the flash head to the right hand side that way it can kind of key light the dad's face right here again I'm always adjusting the flash power and then I'm getting a little bit lower for this shot right here because the dad has a little bit separation from his daughter right here the rim light from the left is giving a nice shape to his face and then we have the bounce flash just giving a really soft light on the bride's face right here and then they also invited all the other father-daughter pairings at the wedding to be invited onto the dance floor and here you can kind of see that and sometimes I use high angle shots for this one I really 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 love the composition and the layering of 
of this shot right here the 8200 all the way at the back casting this nice kind of like rim light on each and every single person on the dance floor which gives some nice layering effect and then i have the v1 pointed up and to the right which is kind of key lighting the bride her sister and her dad in here for this shot i hit the rim light all the way at the back um, behind the head of the sister of the bride and her dad that way there wasn't any crazy flare going on and you can see that the photo retains its contrast for this shot but then here i move a little bit over to the right i'm um, re-exposing flash head again in the composition and you get this cool little lens flare at the bottom right here and then now moving on to the mother son dance um, i'm using pretty much the same vantage point kind of toward near the sweetheart table to use that rear rim light and then the v1 as the bounce light and always keep taking shots and adjusting the flash power as needed and here i'm getting lower for a nice wide shot right here getting that cool kind of accent lighting of the venue with a nice flare action going on and you can even see the people off in the back and looking on at the groom dancing with his mom you'll see me kind of like shimmy me around a little bit um, as I'm just kind of changing angles right here this one I'm gonna get a little bit closer hold the camera a little bit higher up moving on to a tighter focal length to get this little moment of the groom kind of like jokingly wiping the tears from his eyes right here and here I really love this one because of the emotion and the joy and as far as lighting goes you do get this cool like almost like perfect halo at the top of his head and the flare coming down at the bottom and here they invite all the mother-son pairings at the wedding and I try to get this composition where I have a couple off to the left and to the right with the groom and his mom in the middle right here and the rim light really helps to give some separation between the background and the groom and after that they open the dance floor up and that's when I start to open up the shutter speed and start dragging the shutter for all the light trails and the light painting and all that stuff for this particular venue and the lighting situation I kind of dialed in at one fifth of a second at f6.4 with the ISO down at the base at 160 and you'll see me kind of like twist the camera really quickly and that's where you get that kind of like light painting light trail action going on this guy here is getting really hype on the dance floor <laughs> make for some cool shots and here you can kind of see how I twist the camera when I'm taking the shots I do take the bride and groom out to do some couple portraits and in, in order to light this I did steal one of the 8200s from the dance floor as well as the 8200 Pro that I had as my auxiliary light the rogue flash bender attached to it and the flash bender is not the most ideal modifier to use like I could have used a really large soft box which would be probably a better portrait but the truth is I don't own a soft box at least during the time of shooting this wedding I didn't so the key to really getting the results um, to be flattering is to make sure that whoever is the person you want to showcase in this case for me the bride I want to have them turn kind of their face and turn their nose toward the light that way it's falling really kind of like right on their face and creating a nice shape on the face and here I adjust and move the light just a little bit so that it's facing kind of more in the direction that I need it to be I'm always just kind of like altering kind of like my angle and perspective just a little bit just to give a little variety and make sure I get the best shot here you can see that the photo is exposed um, so that everything is pretty much dark except for the string lights in the back here the bride is pointing her face toward the light um, that way it's not fully in shadow and then you have the rim light off to the left which is giving some nice shape and dimension to the couple and here switching over to the 16 millimeter to get a kind of wider shot of the same lighting setup and here I move the couple over to take a picture of this giant like love sign and the key here is to again expose for the highlights of the bulbs in the sign and balance that with the flash exposure. For this one I have the rogue flash bender being the key light with the 8200 Pro um, off to the left which is serving as the rim giving them some dimension and separation from the background. Also let me know down in the comments below if you want to see a video on kind of how I pose couples to kind of look more natural um, but at the same time play into the lighting situation that I need them positioned in. Alright, at this point, that kind of wraps up the behind the scenes of this wedding reception using both on-camera flash and off-camera flash. So I'm hoping this behind the scenes video sheds some light on how I personally use on-camera and off-camera flash for indoor wedding receptions. I have links to all the gear that I use in this video down in the description below. So if you're relatively new to flash photography, I know this might be a lot of information to remember. 
But I promise, with practice, it does get better over time. You guys have to remember that I've been implementing and refining my system over five years of shooting weddings. So I didn't quite get there overnight. But if you do have any questions, let me know down in the comments below and I'll be sure to help you out. On the flip side, if you're a veteran or an off-camera flash whiz, I'm hoping you still picked up a thing or two from this behind the scenes. If you want to see more behind the scenes videos like this one, please be sure to hit the like button. It really does help. And let me know down in the comments which wedding situation you want to see next. As always, please be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. I make a new Fujifilm or photography video every week. And if that's too long for you, please follow me on Instagram at at Photo as I'm always dropping new tutorials, photo deconstructions, and insight into my workflow throughout the week. All right, that's it for me. Remember to get out, go shoot, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.